What's up guys? In this video, we're going to be going over how we can make a data store for our tycoon in Roblox Studio. We are going to the right of our tycoon model, and we're going to search for a folder just like this. And this folder we're going to rename to purchases. There are a few things we kind of need to redo almost in order for our data store to work. So just by adding this folder purchases, and let's open up our core script inside of our scripts folder. There isn't anything that we need to change up here. So we're going to go down all the way down to our button function. We want to change this to tycoon.purchases. Just like that. Let's go down a bit more and right here where it says purchased items dot child added. You're going to say tycoon dot purchases. The only thing that we need to change inside of our course script, except for right up here. But before we actually get to changing that, let's go back to our place right here and inside of our tycoons folder. Let's click on the plus icon to the right of it and let's search for a bindable event just like this. And this event we are going to rename to claim tycoon just like that. And then inside of our Tycoons folder one more time, let's click on the plus icon and add in a script, this script, but let's rename to save data, just like that. And we can close off that script for now because there's still something we need to do inside of our course grid. So inside of our core script, right below this main items, owner, door dot title dot surface guy line, right here. We just want to go down a line right here and let's go ahead and say tycoon.parent.claim tycoon and then we're going to do colon fire just like this and then we're going to pass tycoon as the parameter that we're going to be signaling to the other function inside of our other script all right so let's go over to server script service now right here open up leader stats just like that and we need to create a brand new object value inside of our player so we're going to drop down a few lines underneath our has tycoon instance and we're going to say local tycoon owned will be equal to instance dot new bool value not bull value object value i mean and we're going to parent this to the player just like that then we're going to say our tycoon owned dot name will be equal to quotation marks. Tycoon owned, we don't need to set a value for this just yet because we're going to be doing that inside of our core script right here whenever the player claims the tycoon. So we're actually going to go one line above wherever we fire this claim tycoon event right here. And we're going to say player find first child tycoon owned dot value. And this is going to be equal to tycoon just like that. So what this is doing is that whenever a player will claim the tycoon, we're sending the tycoon owned value that we just made inside of the player to that tycoon. And then we're going to be using this. So whenever the player claims the tycoon, we can actually load in their data later. And that's why we're also firing this bindable event for whenever the player claims the tycoons that way, we can go ahead and save their data. Let's go ahead and close off the core script and close off the leader stat script for now because we don't need it. Next, let's go ahead and grab our tycoon right here. Press Carl and D to duplicate it and let's move it over to server storage so that will keep our tycoon nice and comfy cozy right inside of there next let's open up our save data script inside of our tycoons folder that we added and we need to get a few variables going the first variable is going to be local players and this will be equal to game get service players just like that next we need to get our data store service so we're going to say local data store service this will be equal to game get service full quotation marks data store service just like that and then then we actually need to create a data store using our data store service so we're going to say local data store will be equal to data store service colon get data store 
and then we put quotation marks here. And this is where we get to actually create our data store. What most people will do while they're creating their game is they'll set this to production, or they'll set it to unofficial, or they'll set it to testing. It doesn't really matter what you do for this. I like to put it in a different name than what I'm going to be using for when the game is released. Because that way, while we're testing, we might give ourselves an infinite amount of money or whatever, and we don't want to be at the top of the leaderboards, right? As our game gets released, that kind of ruins it for the other player. So what we want to do for this data store is just give it a name, whatever you want. To name it, for now, I'm just going to name it to my data store, and now we're going to create two different functions. One's going to load our data, and one is going to save our data. Let's start with the save data function. First, so, we're going to say function save data. I'm going to put parentheses right here, and this is going to take our player parameter just like that. Let's go ahead and press enter. And now what we're going to do is we're going to find the tycoon. The player owns through that tycoon owned value that we put inside the player. So we're going to say local. Tycoon will be equal to player find first child parentheses quotation marks. And then this will be our tycoon owned value that we just found. And I'm going to say dot ee -E value right there. So that is going to find the tycoon that the player has claimed next. We actually want to find the purchases. So we want to say local purchases, and this will be equal to our player bind. First child, tycoon owned dot value, and then dot purchases, because that will find our purchases folder. After that, we want to say local cool. Tycoon data will be equal to an empty table for now as we're going to be inserting a lot of stuff into that next. We're actually going to start inserting that stuff now. So we're going to say for I comma object. In I pairs, we're gonna do purchases, get children with parentheses just like that. And then we're gonna put, at the end of this, I'm gonna say table.insert. We're gonna put our tycoon data comma, and then we're going to grab our object dot name, just like that. So what this is going to do is it's going to loop through all of the objects in our purchases folder. And that's going to insert the name of that object into our tycoon data table. So now we're going to be using a thing called a protected call or a puck call. Now, what a pull call is, is basically something that can run functions without erroring and provide. If your code was successfully ran, the reason why we use p calls most for data stores and a ton of other functions is because since it doesn't error, it can still continue with the rest of the script, even if there is an error or a problem. So we're going to say local success comma error, and this will be equal to P call function, just like this. And we're going to put the parentheses at the end of that. And then here's, we're going to say data store colon set async. And this is going to be our player dot user ID. Like that, I'm going to put a comma and then our tycoon data. So this is basically going to grab our tycoon data table and it's going to save it to the player's user ID, just like that. Next, we wanna make sure that if it was an error, we wanna warn the server. So we say, if not, success. Then we're going to warn our error just like that. And that'll basically make it so if in case our data wasn't saved, we can warn the server just like that now. We wanna make it. So whenever the player leaves, we delete the tycoon they currently had, and then we replace it with that tycoon clone that we just made right here. So we're going to grab our new tycoon, and this will be equal to game.server, storage, find first child, and then we're going to do tycoon. Dot, da name at the end of the find first child parentheses. We're going to say clone just like that. Then we're going to set new tycoon dot parent will be equal to tycoon dot parent. And then we're going to say our tycoon destroy just like that because we no longer need it now. Let's go down a little bit and let's go ahead and create a function for when we load our data. We're actually going to be calling this whenever our claim tycoon bindable event gets called. So we're going to say script dot bias. 
Makar to bar parent D dopper baran sao or dot claim tycoon dot event. Ever sick ever connect a function that of all to this. This function is going to take our tycoon parameter just like that because that is the tycoon parameter that we're passing through earlier whenever the player actually claims their tycoon. Now we're going to press enter just like this and now we can find the owner of the tycoon through that tycoon. So we're going to let's say local tycoon owner will be equal to tycoon dot values dot owner value dot value. So that's going to find our owner value value inside of our tycoon. Next, we can set our tycoon data just as an empty variable for now, because we're going to be changing that a little later. Later, I mean now, because we're going to create another p call. So we're going to say local success comma error, and this will be equal to p call function just like this again. And then we're going to set our tycoon data, and this will be equal to data store get async this time. Because we're getting the player's data, I'm going to grab our tycoon owner dot user ID just like that. Once again, we check the if not success, the and we're going to warn our error just like that. And below here, here's where we get to actually load in the player's data. So we're going to check if it's a success as if if we have saved the player's data or gotten the player's data in this case. And we have tycoon data. Then is we're going to create a tycoon clone and this will be equal to game dot server storage. That's going to be fine. First child tycoon dot name. And then we're going to say clone at the end of that because we're creating a tycoon clone. Then we want to say our tycoon clone that parent will be equal to tycoon dot parent. We're basically setting all all the properties of our tycoon to our tycoon clone because we're going to be deleting our normal tycoon when we actually load the player's data. So now we say tycoon mesh music cloned values dot owner value value equals to tycoon dot values dot owner value the capital OA value just like that. And then we get our tycoon owner like that. And then we set their tycoon owned value to tycoon just like that not tycoon, the tycoon clone. I meant to say, just like that. Next, we tell our Kai tycoon to be destroyed, just like that. And then we can set our tycoon clone, just like that, to our tycoon up here. So we don't run into any more errors now. Let's go ahead and retrieve the various folders from our clone tycoon so I can grab our local purchases folder and this will be equal to our clone, our tycoon clone find. First child purchases, because as our purchases foldered, we're going to say local. Uh, purchased objects folder, or say local purchased items folder. And this will be equal to tycoon clone fine first child. Purchased item just like that. Other grab our local buttons folder, and this will be equal to tycoon clone fine first child buttons folder just like that. Then we're going to create a a et et a cray as sa far loop that's going to loop through all of our buttons inside of our buttons folder and check if the object value inside of that button matches with the name of the object that we stored inside of the player right up here when we insert the object's name into our tycoon data table which we saved to the player then we're basically going to move that object into our purchases folder in our new tycoon so Let's say for I, comma, button, in I pairs, uh, we're going to say our buttons folder. Get children do. If it is well, if our button fine for first child object, then we're going to say local object will be equal to our purchased items. Folder find first child our button dot object dot value. Just like that. Now, if it is our object and table dot, find our tycoon daughter table object dot name then whereas set the object dot parent and this will be equal to our purchases folder so basically what this is doing is creating a loop through all of our buttons up here is checking if the button has a value called object if it does it's going to search through our purchased items folder and it's going to find that object if it does find the object and that object is inside of our tycoon data table, then it's gonna move that object 
to the Purchases folder. Another thing we need to do, though, now is that we need to hide the button for that object so the player can't buy multiple of that object. So let's go right up here after our save data function right here. And let's say local function. And this is going to be buttons, just like this. Let's name it buttons or whatever name you want to give it. And then this is going to take the parameter of button However, down here we need to make sure that the player actually saves the data when they leave. So we're going to grab our player's variable from the top, or I say players.player removing, and we're going to connect a function to that. And this function going to take the parameter of player. Next, we just say our save data function, and we pass the player parameter to that, and that is all we have to do. So what this is going to do is that if the player gets kicked or if the player leaves, it's going to save the data for that player. So now, in case the game crashes, we want to make sure that we also save the player's data. So what we want to say is game colon bind to close, which means if the game gets shut down for any reason, then we're going to call a function. We're going to loop through all of the players. So we're going to say for I comma player in I pairs, and we're going to say game dot players, get players, not get players from character, but get players. And then we're going to do this and recall our save data for that player. So that way we save their data. Even if the game crashes, now we can X off of our script. And there's one more thing that we need to do next. We go to game settings right up here, go to security right here. And then we need to enable studio access to API services now. If you're in a team, create with someone else. You need to make sure that the owner of the game actually sets this to enabled. Otherwise, it will not work. But once you do set this to enabled, click on save. And then that will go ahead and save the changes we just made. Let's go ahead and click play and see what happens. So the tycoon is right over here now. Whenever we claim the tycoon, as you can see, since we don't have any data at the moment, it's not going to load any data in. However, let's go ahead and buy a dropper real quick. Let's run over here, select a cache right here. Let's go over to our button. Let's buy the colorizer now. Let's say we left just like this by stopping the game. Give it a second or two. Now we go and click on play once again. Alrighty, I made a mistake here. And instead of saying tycoon equals to tycoon clone, I accidentally said tycoon clone equals to tycoon. And the difference between these is quite drastic as we just deleted the tycoon. So let's go ahead and swap these around real quick and say tycoon will be equal to tycoon clone just like this let's go ahead and click play now so going over here if i claim my tycoon real quick i don't have any data in my tycoon whatsoever yet however if i go ahead and buy a few buttons here let's buy the first dropper go over here collected cash let's go over buy the colorizer real quick just like that all right so now we have objects in our tycoon if we open up the workspace, Tycoon's folder, Tycoon model, and then our purchases folder, you can see that we have our items inside of our purchases folder here. As you can observe, the dropper, colorizer, and materializer save data because these components load after the player claims the Tycoon. If you enjoyed the video and don't want to miss out on future content, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to this channel. Goodbye, and see you in the next episode.